Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod as the United States of America and soon to be President George Wallace. I'm not going to refer to him as Jorge Wallach anymore, that's kind of run, it, run its course, it's getting a bit stale. But you may notice that we aren't quite uh, where we stopped. We stopped on the 25th of April, we're back on the 5th, and let me tell you why. That is because I've replayed from the start, um, which I didn't mind doing because, you know, it was like a year and, and a few months. But you may ask why I played from the start. Uh, the reason is Malaya. Or Malaysia, whichever whichever it's calling itself. So, in the custom country paths uh, screen, we selected the anti-OFN candidate to win. Now, you may be wondering, Joshua, why would you select the anti-OFN candidate to win? Well, that is because if the anti-OFN candidate wins, the progressive NPP gets a boost. Uh, and you also get 50 political power. Um, which, you know, helps the NPP in general in the 1964 elections and beyond. Um, and if the pro-OFN candidate wins, I believe it helps the RDs. However, if the pro-OFN candidate wins, Malaya will also join your economic sphere. I think they'll also, um, they may... Actually, no, I don't, I don't think they do join our faction, but they do join our economic sphere, and that's good enough for me. You know, one out of two is better than zero out of two. Um, and not to mention the fact that I have played ahead to the 1964 election a second time, and we really blew Bennett out of the water. So I think we can make this small allowance here and get the pro-OFN guy in power. Though I suppose, you know, I wonder how much it'll swing it going from pro-NPP to pro-RD. Well, like, not just going from pro-NPP to nothing, going from pro-NPP to pro-RD. Maybe hopefully that won't swing things too much, but I honestly don't think it will. And the reason why... We're on the 5th of April not, and not the 25th, apart from that, is because naturally I'm not reading the events in full before I click them. So naturally things have progressed a bit faster, so we're already on the next Instagram event with only one day left. Um, and I don't think we'll have quite as high an operational strength either, but just to quickly show off everything. We've been hammering the debt, we've been doing, of course, you know, slashing budgets everywhere. Um, we, we have, of course, denuclearized down to a stockpile of three and a half thousand. I don't know why it's running slow, because I was literally just playing the goddamn game. Um, you know, running a very delicious surplus. 30 billion, that is very nice. We, of course, have the uh, maximum consumer goods uh, allocation. Need consumer goods, yeah. We've allocated as many as possible. Um... Also, my researches have been different, so this is currently what we're producing. Um, we're producing a lot of APCs, a lot of M60s. I think we've already converted all of our divisions to uh, the mechanized template. Yes, we have. Good. That's fantastic. Um, though they're not all trained... Oh, we haven't quite converted everything. Okay, we're almost there, so we'll do that there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there we are. We will be training up everyone. Um, and as far as I'm aware, have we... As soon as we're finished researching these... Um, APC... I, and I, I never realised that these... Mo well, I did realise it was a while ago. Um, that these modules for the IFVs... Or for the AFE, that should be IFE, but whatever. That Because there are, all of these vehicles are AFVs. Um that the modules for the IFEs also apply to the uh, the APCs. Um, I realized that a while ago, and I was like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Because at, at first I thought that you couldn't even customize the APC, but no, you can. Um, so as soon as these are finished being researched, um, we will be upgrading our M60s and our M113s. It's good to see we already have a shield on it. Um, though I'm kind of weird, considering the Americans went into Vietnam without the shield, I think. And we're currently way before America went into... Well, not way before, Five, four years? Four years before that? Before, mm, never mind. It pulled out like early to mid 70s, I think. Um, was, it, was it like 60? Okay. Let me quickly check. I want to say 68 to 72. But that seems too short. Maybe 65 to 72? Okay, yeah, 65. Offer Johnson at least, yeah. Uh, now. 
got to turn down the music a small bit. Uh, Alright, recording seems good, that's good. Now, Nixon's Dilemma. President Nixon has to have been sitting in silence at the Resolute desk for almost a full minute. Speaker John W. McCormick, who had come in expecting to make a grand presentation, was now sitting across from him and growing more uncomfortable by the minute. He'd expected Nixon to read through the bill he'd handed him and then quickly offer a signature. Instead, Nixon just stared at the heading at the top of the first page of the Kennedy Civil Rights Act. Jack had some fucking nerve, thought Nixon it was him, Johnson, and the other Republicans who'd managed to bring this bill. Johnson's a Democrat who managed to bring this bill through the Senate. To be sure, Kennedy had introduced the bill and wrangled some holdout Democrats to get behind it. Um, we have uh, Bloody Wednesday, yeah. Uh, but he sure as shit didn't deserve the credit for this act. What was he playing at? Was this some goddamn silly attempt to make America shine in his eyes? Did Jack just hate the thought of Nixon being praised once in a blue moon? An idea crossed Nixon's mind if he vetoed this act. Kennedy would be ruined. The pro-Kennedy wing of the RDC didn't have a supermajority in the Senate to overturn his veto. His vice president would have no choice but to stand by his decision. It would be the embarrassment of a lifetime, and yet Nixon would go down with him. He wasn't a racist. He'd campaigned for civil rights in 1960. It would be insane to veto this act. Vetoing a landmark bill like this, especially on the heels of Bloody Wednesday, would be cutting off his nose to spite his face. Yet Kennedy would finally get what he deserved. Nixon came to his senses and realized how anxious McCormick was getting. He needs to give him an answer now. He opened his mouth and said, I, I, I will gladly sign this bill, Mr. Speaker. Nixon will sign the Civil Rights Act into law. The segregationists in the coalition will not be happy. Nativist voters will try to support the Nationalist Caucus over the span of eight weeks. Rural voters will try to support the Nationalist Caucus over the span of six weeks and urban voters will support will try to support the Democratic Party over the span of two weeks. <laughs> Imagine if we vetoed it after Bloody Wednesday especially. Also, we have a good number of um, of senators. 38, I believe. Is it 38? We were predicted to get like four and we ended up getting something like 11 or something like that. We were predicted to get only a few, but we got like double at least. Yeah, we've got 38 senators. That's really good. Ideally, now we can uh, we can have the Senate can be controlled by the National Progressive Party for Wallace's first term. That would be ideal. Also, the uh, the Ballantauk Blitz is not yet over, uh, though we have completed all decisions prior to it beginning. Now, should, you know, what, let me just let me just quickly check something. I've done so many playthroughs now that um that the episodes that I'm recording and the playthroughs are starting to blend into one and I can't quite remember if I've correctly left off if I've correctly started where we left off. It was the twenty fifth of April nineteen sixty three, right? It was good, good, good. Now Yeah, we definitely won't have as high of a, as a, of a um, operational strength. Because we had like we were going, I think when I played ahead we had like we got up to ninety nine. Which was nice, but I don't think we'll get that high. Probably just uh, get my uh, let my eye slip off of it. Unfortunately, we will still win. Now, the Civil Rights of 1963 uh, passes. The Civil Rights Act of 1963 passes. It was a bill that many senators knew would bring much needed equality to the United States, a nation who had strived for the concept since the Declaration of Independence was signed. Historically, African Americans had little help had little help from the government in their fight for freedom. Even the 15th Amendment only gave blacks the, the right to vote on paper. There was no way of enforcing the policy, and over time, southern states exploited loopholes in order to maintain the status quo of the land. Poll taxes, literacy tests, and the, the infamous grandfather clause all of this would change uh, would change when the senators voted in favour of passing the bi this bill. Desegregationists rejoiced southern politicians foamed at the mouth. This act sternly outlaws discrimination based on race, colour, religion, sex or national origin. Unequal voting requirements were abolished. Schools, businesses and other public accommodations were officially desegregated. African Americans essentially gained the right to go to any school, work for any business and attend any public facility they choose. As a whole, African Americans had political power that the race had never seen before and that and this was only the first step towards full desegregation. But that was all well in the South. Immediately, Southern voters flocked to the NPP's Nationalist Caucus in hopes that the bill would be reversed, that that society would return to normal. Many Southerners despised this blatant attack on their life livelihood, and with support from southern politicians, they had the power to physically defeat uh, desegregation. Not only did the bill, did this bill, not only did this bill grant much needed reform, but it also caused division in the U.S. not seen since the Civil War. May I remind you, the federal government overrides the state. This will increase the status of civil rights, replace legal inequality with equal rights. Effective changes, Southern Democrats announced their allegiance 
to the NPP. Okay, so the Southern Democrats announced their allegiance to the NPP. So does that mean that the Democrats will vote with us? The Southern Democrats will vote with us, or does it is, does it just mean that all the Southern Democrats become nationalist NPP members? The NPP shifts to the right. The rights of minorities will improve. Increases monthly vote franchise policy effectiveness drift. The, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1963. After years of protests, political infighting, and rising discontent across the nation, this may be a watershed moment. While the Republican Democrats had dragged their feet on the issue for years, Vice President Kennedy spearheaded a bill named the Civil Rights Act of 1962, but found harsh competition in the President himself, who desired to postpone the issue longer. Recent events, however, sparked a change in the Senate, who, fearing a civil conflict, quickly ratified the bill. While the bill has been celebrated nationwide, it has caused other issues. Tensions between Kennedy and Nixon are high, with the President's actions against the bill causing the public's opinion of him to drop even further. As Southern politicians have begun defecting to the NPP en masse. Many fear this will be a tipping point in American politics, a turning point in the story of our nation. Nativist voters will trend to support the Nationalist Caucus over the span of eight weeks with an immediate change of partisanship. Rural voters will do the same over the span of four weeks. Uh, urban voters will trend to support the Democratic Party over the span of four weeks with an immediate change in partisanship. Black voters will... Why would black voters trend to support the Democratic Party? Or is, is that because the Democratic Party is no longer the party of segregation because all the segregationist democrats have joined the nationalist npp so now the democrats are basically just welfare and that's kind of it um hispanic voters all trying to support the democratic party over the span of eight weeks with immediate change in partisanship i think that's what happened that that's what's after happening all these southern democrats southern democrat senators and all the all their elected officials all of that have all joined the nationalist npp so any remaining democrats are just kind of welfare un like unracist welfare guys i think or at least less racist. Tax hike? Nope. Okay. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we almost have enough APC school. Uh, that's all fine. Still the flying tigers? Nah, I think I'm good. Tell you what, now is a good time. I also didn't do uh, the focuses in the exact same order either. So what I will do now is I will read the focuses. Not all of them, because I have read some of them, but not all of them. Okay, we definitely read these. Yeah, definitely read these. Read that. I definitely read this. Yeah, I read that. Not sure if I read that. Let's highlight that there. I'll break it up, rather. I read that. I read that. Hmm, I don't think I read this. Expanded business ties. If we are to truly defend South Africa from a bundle of sticks and encroachment, we need to make it worth defending. If we can encourage American businesses to invest into South Africa, not only can we expect support and even financing from them, but we can also expect no more complaints and need no further justification to defend South Africa. No one will be able to complain. Money is upon the line now after all. Even if South Africa gets one level of infrastructure in Chobe, our commitment to South Africa grow. Grow. Oh, goddamn. Grow. I assume that's, I assume that's not Chobe, that's like Kobe or Kobe or something like that. Or Kobe. Now, protecting our interests with the newly realized importance of South Africa, it is essential that we gain a foothold there before anything occurs. Not only will this allow us to react quicker to anything to anything that occurs to our lamp of democracy in Africa, but, well, 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 but will also help with justifying interventions to our own population. After all, we ought to protect our troops overseas. And you'll be, oh, I did read that as well. Yeah, Western Cape gets three level of naval bases, one level of infrastructure, four levels of air base. Uh, so we need to, our first material commitment in South Africa will make it easier to convince Americans to intervene. It will, however, also make it difficult to pull out if future events require it. Hmm. Bring out the tinderbox, make no mistake. The colonies of Japan had won from Europe may fuel its, its economy to meteoric heights, but they are by no means eager in fulfilling the quotas uh, chained to their backs. Discontent is a pox. Uh, con I think I read this as well because I remember saying the word concomitant. Yeah. Lane Rebellion, I didn't actually do this focus because I just knocked him out first. So technically it would be wrong to read it because we didn't actually do this focus. It bypassed. Uh, or if we did actually read, uh, do this one. I also read this one because I remember saying that. Didn't do that one, but I'll bring it up anyway. Fighting Filipinos. 
Yeah, I don't think I didn't read this. The armed forces of the Far East announced its downfall not with a whimper, but with a defined roar hearkening to the revolutionary spirits of the Philippines not too distant past. Rizal, uh, I think I read this as well. Bonifacio Aguinaldo, the candor and zeal with which an army of born warriors promised their oppressors due reckoning had lit flames within every... Yeah, I definitely read that. Yeah. I don't think I read this. Strike the match. Behind a forgotten uh, jog carta alleyway, a haggard bar walker drags deep from a lit cigarette with its glowing red and wispy great uh, trails. The smoldering ash looks like a small inferno set against the inky black sky. His other, hands, uh, fingers a, his other hand fingers a small package wrapped in news newspaper. A bundle of wires protrude from a hole gouged out of Premier Sicarno's head. On a rice paddy outside uh, Cebu City, a farmer... Wrapped in blood red cloth, downs, uh, douses a bale of rice stalks with lighter fuel. He eyes the full moon in between empty zippos. Tonight, a field of stars accompanies its one light. His comrades are lucky this evening. In a night this bright, even a blind man from hilltops miles away can, uh, can spot a pillar of smoke. And in a derelict apartment in Darwin CBD, a uh, plain clothes tunes uh, her ham radio to an unused frequency. Her trained ears scour through the static for the string of numbers that will set a thousand islands alight. At the, ver at the first line of open rebellion, the United States will send two and a half thousand pieces of infantry equipment to Indonesian rebel groups. And we obviously, we've, we've had, we did all the same events, you know, promoting all the Indonesian rebel groups. Send it, I think we sent like three and a half thousand units of infantry, infantry equipment through events. And this is another two and a half thousand right here. We are building up the, we've built up the port of Magadan. We're increasing support. We've done all the decisions here about getting our candidates chances in the election. But of course, we have them selected in the custom country um, paths screen. We've done everything about Indonesians and Filipinos and Malayans, so we should be pretty good. If we do anything in Europe? Yeah, resistance will be more prepared to... Oh, okay, our price success, somehow. Okay, didn't even have to put money into it. And now... We've actually also done this focus already, and we've read it too. It's the helping out a friend one, so I will just take a moment to assess everything. Radio waves. Yeah, haven't read this. We'll read this. The living room had filled with static, flooding the eardrums of Bobby Cherry. The room was practically pitch black, save for the dust illuminated by the light peeking through. Uh, let me do, go somewhere else. Yeah, Showing up a support for the institution in crucial states would mean keeping our Anglo friends in power. Oh, nice. We can organize distance. Okay, we'll get 89. We could have had 99. That was my bad. Sorry about that. Now, radio waves. Uh, da -da -da -da. Covering the window, sitting alone in his worn leather armchair with a radio and dry shot glass sitting on his chairside table, Cherry overheard a collection of words broke through the static, which has caused mass protests throughout the city. It's a fucking miracle he got those rats to agree with him. If Nixon grew a goddamn spine, we Kennedy's fault all. Cherry had been listening to the South all night, all of its anger, all of the excesses of those that had so thoroughly violated America. What's more, he knew he wasn't alone. He could just picture the families gathered around their radio sets crying as they listened to the fate of America be decided without their word, without their input, without their say in what would happen to their lives. Uh, what would happen to their culture that they fought so hard to preserve? What? Uh, what's more, why Kennedy thought he could? Uh, da -da -da -da. Why Kennedy thought he could? Let me move this out the way. I'm not sure if the Batista event will, will, will start immediately, so I'll kind of just ignore this. No, what was I saying? What's more, why Kennedy thought he could pull this kind of thing and get away with it was beyond Cherry. Someday Kennedy was going to pay for what he'd done, though what uh, scared Cherry the most was that, the, was that the president was far from done. Cherry turned the dial on the radio. Yeah, that the president was far from done, I don't know what I said. Cherry turned the radio on the dial and its waves of static withered away into nothing. Then Cherry was alone in his home with not even the static to calm his nerves, nothing but his thoughts to keep him company. It took him less than a minute to organize his evening musings into a plan, one that would forever put the final nail in the coffin of Northern Tyranny. Ah, is he going to be the man to assassinate Kennedy? Who knows? Oh, it's the 1963 Scottish Open. Oh, okay, power placed in what place? We already read that, so that's fine. Now, landfall. The pilot grinned. He'd been waiting a rather long time for any action. T uh, tilting the flight stick forward, he pulled back the throttle as his A6 intruder pitched forward and accelerated. He squeezed the trigger lightly at first before growing more firm to pull that loose an arc of fire and death directed at the huge hill in front of him atop which a statue of Christ the Redeemer stood the hill he knew was dotted with fascist artillery. 
Wait, there's a statue of Christ the Redeemer in Brazil too? Or, not in Brazil, in uh, uh, the Dominican Republic. The most important part of any artillery team is a spotter. His job is to find targets and instruct the man behind the guns. Today, the spotter certainly spotted something, but but, uh, but not a target. An American plane was racing towards his position, um, and it was bringing death. He could see the fire spreading from its guns, and he could only grimace. The spotter raised the radio to his lips and spoke a warning, a cry for help. Nobody could tell it was drowned over by the sounds of explosion and fire. Plane after plane flew over what had once been an artillery position, signaling that the invasion had begun. This story was unfolding around the Dominican Republic. American planes were pounding military targets. Oh no! The communists have taken, uh, have taken Manila instead of us. That's unfortunate. Doesn't change anything, but you know, we'll win anyway. Like we have most of the Philippines, but uh, just unfortunately, we couldn't be the first one. Now, two and three divisions will be raised in the U.S. FIP. Oh wait, if I drag this out, can I get more? Uh, Oh, I think I actually might be able to. Oh, that's cheesy. That's so cheesy. Nice, nice, nice. Um, American planes are pounding military targets. Uh, below the planes in the sea, a landing craft crashed onto the shore, and over 2,000 men stormed off of them, fighting for liberty, fighting against a bundle of six of That's a lot more than 2,000 men. We're sending eight brigades. The attack on the outside was joined by an attack on the inside. Rebels, insurgents, mobs, they all joined their comrades on the outside in their fight to overthrow the dictator. Guns of all kinds were used from modern ones supplied by the CIA to ancient firearms that predate the First World Conflict. Makeshift spears, clubs, anything that could help put an end to the regime. The effort paid off before Trujillo had a clear picture of the situation. The landing at Puerto Plata had succeeded and shortly after that the auxiliary landing at Luperon. Uh, 30 clicks west had the same results in the White House's... Um, do this. Maybe we will get 99. I think we will. Uh, uh, where was I? Had the same results in the White House Situation Room. President Richard Nixon nodded at the mustached man sitting across from him. Fidel Castro nodded back. Commander Bio had just sent a wire. Now, chaos at convention day. Let me get a quick look. Not true video. Chaos at convention day. Patrick uh, Buchan Hepburn was an, uh, was an inexpressive man. One of the many British exiles spread through the former territories of the British Empire. To minor, he was the perfect man to oversee the West Indies Constitutional Convention. Order the Convention on the Federation of the... Uh, on the Convention on the Federation of the West Indies is called to order. The clerk will now read the resolution under debate. A practiced voice rang out. Resolved that the Federation of the West Indies recognizes the right of all citizens, including linguistic minority population of a member nation. A few scattered shouts approval uh, from the French and Dutch delegations were quieted. Oh man, we got a hundred. We did even better. Splendid. The operation is going. Indeed, it is. A hundred operational strength, baby. No, where was I? The resolution has been read, the, and so it went, resolutions on language, trade, and law moving relatively smoothly through the convention. Minor counted himself lucky that the Trinidad PM had seen fit to go through him before trying to get the Air Force to vacate uh, Chaguara, Chaguara Mass. As if the DOD would agree to downsize anything near the canal. There was, uh, oh no, uh, through an upper house divided equally between the Federation's member states. Okay, so now what, we, what can we do? We're going to insert Spanish-speaking American officers. Frogman raids, no. This, no. All I, need to do, all I need for this is political power, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, prepare logistical supply. Smuggling supplies. Yeah, we'll arm insurgents. Begin close air sorties. Frog, and we'll hold off on this. Prepare logistical support. Surely we should have, we should have, uh, should have had access to that before we went in. Yeah, Batista escapes. Hopefully we get him when we shoot him in the head. Fulgencio Batista, a uh, former Cuban dictator, escaped to the Dominican Republic four years ago. Since then, he's been far... He's, he's so far... Since then, he's so far been the largest threat to the future alignment of the island. If the Dominican rebels manage to bring the Trujillo regime to its knees fast enough, we might be able to kill two birds with one stone. Batista will manage to escape the island unscathed in 30 days if we don't knock them out quickly. Now, chaos at convention day. Uh, there was a brief silence before the chamber erupted. In I can't send you volunteers, I don't think. No. 
If we have no reason, but right. I think we have every reason. No. Yeah, that's fine. How many men do you have, by the way? With your eight brigades. 37,000 versus... 25, okay, we should be fine. Now, uh, blah, 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 blah. there was a brief silence before the chamber erupted, and Chaos Minor grimaced as the delegates clashed amongst themselves. Order, order, this chamber will come to order the Honorable. It took 50 minutes before Hepburn was able to get, was able to get the room under control. For another five for it to quiet down enough for uh, Bustamante to speak. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Bustamante Rose, this resolution is nothing less than an insult to the good people of Jamaica who... Uh, who, despite making it up, uh, who, despite making up, I cannot in good conscience support Jamaica's continued membership in the Federation and implore every Jamaican patriot to accompany me in abandoning this failed enterprise. Minor winced as he watched uh, Bustam uh, Bustamante and the members of the Jamaican Labour Party vacate the convention. Minor nursed a headache and couldn't help but ponder how in the world is the Federation still standing. West Indies Federation replaced an unnatural union with dreams of unity. That seems good, though. This seems this this just seems like it went badly. Okay. Effective change, daily political power gain plus 0.3, that's a lot. Weekly civility plus 0.3%, annual GDP growth factor plus 25%. Oh, that was the wrong thing to click, I meant to click. Actually, actually no, I think maybe we do need to restart something here. Is the um, machine gone? No, we already got it. Automatic support weapon, that's fine. No, what we need to research is better engines and armor. Oh, wait, what, what were we unlocking there? Was it Spall Liner? Yeah, nice, nice. They, they still all be checkboxes. Why am I being limited? I hate it so much. Now. Uh, supplies dwindle in... How many days? Three days. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, we have 11 days of this. Okay. The Porta Plata Invasion. The collapse of the Triumvirate... Uh, has upturned much of Europe's geopolitical position and the aftershocks still ripple now crossing an ocean. The Dominican Republic under Rafael Trujillo uh, has long acted as a gateway into the Americas for the former European Axis powers overseeing trade agreements while uh, evading abortive assassinations orchestrated by the United States. Trujillo's luck today seems to have run thin. The Caribbean Legion Army of anti bundle of sticks volunteers led by the Spanish Republican exile Alberto Bayo have landed in Puerto Plata. Uh, intending to oust the Generalissimo in conjunction with them, the American and Cuban air forces uh, are collaborating in bombing runs on key on key Dominican positions in the north. As reports of mutinies and revolts trickle in from inside the, the Dominican Republic, it is clear that the fight for its future has now begun. Time to finish Trujillo for good. Okay, we're making really good progress. We should have no problem managing to snatch up Trujillo. Or, uh, Batista. Fine. I wish it was an insurgency meter, I can't really tell. Is the, do you have a national spirit about the ins insurgency? Surely you do. I imagine it's the widespread revolts thing. Now, uh, let, let me quickly check that uh, national spirit again. Answering the question, perhaps it was principle which had kept the question firmly behind the grapevine. Much of the Philippine uh, department had lived through the insurrection, after all, and for all their faults, none could accuse them of forgetting who the real banditos were. It could even have been fatalism, widespread as it was, as it was before the Blitz. The Reds then seemed much farther away than Manila if Red and Blue both died in one last... Uh and one last push regardless, then at least Brass would spare themselves from shelling out and uh, from shelling out a clear-cut answer. Whatever the case, said Brass had uh, deferred it so often because uh, had deferred it so often it became a, sard a sardonic in-joke amongst the grunts. Let's quickly check the Philippines comprehensive aid package package there we are. Uh, 
Step on a landmine, then answer the question. Outlast a tank in a knife fight, and then answer the question. Raise all glory over Manila Bay, then answer the question. They uh, they aged about as one expects when Manila did fall. This time to rock. Asked for the punchline himself with the thinly veiled ultimatum looping over their heads. The brightest minds of the Commonwealth brought the question out of the grapevine and into the 18th floor of the Manila Hotel. Predictably, personalities clashed egos, butted heads, and principle and principle waged warm pragmatism from sunrise to sundown within the penthouse's walls. Only pointed uh, only pointed reminders of the Commonwealth's precarious situation. Um, and many a shattered cup of coffee prevented escalation beyond repair. Nevertheless, the men assembled were still men of flesh and blood. Their throats grew sore with every shouting match, and every shouting match in turn sapped strength and will the longer they unraveled. In the, el in the end, old man Furtick himself broke the, broke the deadlock by saying, either tell Tarok our alliance holds. I think this leads to the... Uh, the... The United, the United Front? Yeah, the United, Fili yeah, United Filipino Front. No. Tell Turok he can take his rides back to the jungle. It's America all day, baby. Come on, knock him out. You got 20 days. You're doing well. Where the hell are the other brigade? Where the hell are the rest of your brigades? I count four. But you've got eight, so where the hell are they? Am I blind? You got two here. Okay, so apparently something's also going on over here. Maybe I just can't see. What the hell is going on? I really don't know. Did we win? We did. Okay. Oh, here they are. I really don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> nice. A victory! If a Dominican had heard the sound of crunching boots... Let me just quickly do this. Of uh, crunching boots on the road to the palace, he'd immediately assumed that Generalissimo Trujillo was coming with a military parade. But this parade was that of triumph. The ones who had, who, who had come to topple the bundle of sixes had achieved their aims. Arms linked together. Comandante Bayo March and aligned with his comrades in arms, Uribari, Morgan, Manoyo, Kubela, and Kamano. Their weapons slung on their backs. Behind them marched. Behind them marched a mixed honor guard of legionnaires and rebels. Bio looked ahead at the elegant domed building that was the National Palace. It wasn't as ornate as the former presidential palace in La, in La Habana, but it kept the same beauty, yet it hadn't been unscathed from the fighting that took place earlier as Cuidad Trujillo. It's a lot of events. Now we have a production unit, so let us assign it. Fine. Now, where was I? As Quidad Trujillo had become, uh, or became a qu uh, quick and brutal battleground, windows were broken, bullet marks riddled the walls and pillars, and smoke rose out of the dome from where fire had been put out. The fighting was over, and the scenes that had followed Fidel's triumph now replicated themselves in Dominican streets. Uh, collaborators were being singled out and pushed and pushed into cars by rebel forces, while loyalist forces surrendered to legionnaires and were led away hand, hands up and heads bowed. Trujillo's portraits were burned in the streets, his statues smashed to pieces, the houses of his loyalists looted clean. Rebels helped grieving civilians collect the dead off of the streets. The parade halted and Bayo and his subordinates made their way into the palace. Unlike Fidel's revolution, the meeting was tense, not comradely. They all had different visions for the, for the future and their alliance was starting to crack, but they needed to keep public appearances. So they stood on the palace's steps, arms linked again and, and until Bayo soared to the podium. Surrounded by the banners of the legion, uh, below him waited OFN and Mexican journalists, camera crews, and a cheering crowd um, waving Cuban and Dominican flags. Bio was no Fidel, but his authoritative voice was an instant attention getter. Revolutionaries, today the bundle of sixes tyranny of Trujillo is over, and now our reorganization process can begin. I will serve as head of a provisional junta of all anti bundle of sixes forces. Ah, lovely, more events. Uh, of all anti bundle of sixes forces until elections can happen, or may happen. Viva la Revolución. All voters will trend more internationalist on the issue of foreign policy over the span of four weeks and support and all voters will immediately slightly shift to support the Republican Party. Now, uh, uh, six days. Or how, how long do I have this? Dominican regime collapses. The expectations of international analysts and the claims of Dominican rebels have both been affirmed today as Rafael Trujillo and the regime built around him are dead. Trujillo's supporters put up a former fight than expected and held off longer than most predictions. Uh, however, uh, Joaquin uh, Balugi, Balagour, Balugur, Balagour, I'm 
butch I, I, I nailed the Joaquin part and now I'm butchering the surname. Balagor. Balagor. Balagway. Trujillo, second in command, has headed a plot to put an end to the dictator. Trujillo being ambushed and shot dead by a small band of officers. Initially hoping to lead a unity government, American and rebel pressure force Bal Balagor to stick to the sidelines as a provisional government has been formed, headed by the Caribbean Legion, with the specific aims of pacifying the country and holding elections. However, many conservatives with true support of following Balagor's sidelining, casting doubts on the future stability of the, prog of the process. The Caribbean has no room for bundle of sticksism. Not anymore. Now, if we'll get into a Batista executed, the latest chapter. I love how we can just see him, like a guy with a rifle, like shooting, like, I don't know. Nothing else. The latest chapter in Cuban history has ended alongside the man for whom opposition let the very spark. Former Cuban President Fulgencio Batista four years ago fled to the Dominican Republic once fortune shifted at home. It has a situation in Santo Domingo devolved in turn. He attempted to flee with his fortune and family towards Iberia. This failed though as his vehicle was accosted by a handful of mutineers. What followed was a mass celebration across Cuba as he was quickly flown into the island. Paraded and publicly humiliated across the streets of Havana, Batista was placed under a public show trial in which he was accused of a litany of crimes including corruption, sedition, hundreds of counts of murder and high treason. His death sentence came as no surprise, the ruling being followed by the televised ex execution of the former dictator. You won't be missed, not in Cuba. Not by Castro supporters, at least. Now. The investigation concludes from what feels like the first day in a long time. People are finally starting to breathe a little easier in the White House. The police's investigation of the Republican Democrat headquarters break-in has concluded, and while the identity of the burglars has yet to be known, the concern was less who they were and more what they have taken. While well, a number of file cabinets were ransacked during the break-in, a cross-reference of the indexes revealed that hardly any files were missing. Uh, the only ones that were gone related to some re-election campaign strategies from 1964, and those thankfully contain no mention of certain stunts pulled during the last election. The president's paranoid uh, that the NPP were just as ruthless as he feared is beginning to dissipate, allowing him and his staff to once again focus on the state of the nation and other more important matters. This chapter of the Nixon administration has been closed for now, at least. And may it stay that way. Tricky Dick is not known to the public as Tricky yet. Now, Freedom Riders. The 15 riders gathered at the Greyhound Terminal in Washington, D.C., waiting for the next bus. Uh, it had been years since the first Freedom Riders had stood there, knowing that they would be placing themselves at risk as they travelled into the segregated South, and trouble had followed their forebearers, uh, forebearers every step of the way, arrests in Virginia, the Carolinas, and Mississippi before the horrendous beatings and arson attacks by the Ku Klux Klan in Alabama. A black man in his 30s turned to a white woman in her 20s, uh, fidgeting next to him, nervous. The woman nodded, I got the training and everything, but nothing really prepares you for what you see on the news. No, does, uh, no it doesn't prepare you. Not all the way, anyway. The man replied somberly before offering a, offering a burn-scarred hand. Name is Marlowe. Ask me anything. It's not my first time on a Freedom ride. The woman gingerly took Marlowe's hand, April she mouthed. She tried not to look at the scars. Why did you come back? Marlowe looked at his hands. The first time is scary, I know. Even if you, if you yeah. even if you know you're doing the right thing, he looked at the 12 people waiting alongside them. But after my first ride, I know I had to come back for our brothers and sisters fighting the good fight. We were never meant to travel alone. True that. No, which one is next? Batista. Oh yeah, that's, I don't know why this keeps going even though, you know, we shot his ass. <laughs> Uh, they'll remember me now. Let me just quickly check the recording, make sure all is well. Indeed, it is fantastic. Despite being in a place that most people would find enviable, namely on the beautiful archipelago of Florida Keys, USA, Emil Maurice. Ah, he's back! I, th I think I, I remember saying that uh, we never hear from him again, but no, here we are. Emile Maurice was not uh, really feeling all right. He had got what he wanted, what he wanted, yes, but he now was in what was de facto a state of house arrest, being unable to leave his house as he pleased. And while the weather was better and the set setting decidedly less Natsak infested than that uh, infested that in Madagascar, um, the situation hadn't really improved, had it? Thinking about it, what had he accomplished? He'd only had but he had. He only had betrayed his friend Adolf Schickelgruber, who had once protected him from certain death. He had betrayed his nation, Germany. And it sold out to what? Ah, spend it. Oh, where was I? I keep getting interrupted. Uh, what I'll do is I'll move it out of the way. That's why I won't get interrupted. And had sold out to what used to be a sworn enemy, and more important, and most importantly, he had left his family behind. Where were they now? Maurice didn't want to think about it. They were probably dead or worse, but that was the price for his own safety. Damn, he left your family behind like the wife and kids. It's fucked up. What Adolf approved of, of where he was now, probably not, but that didn't matter anymore. 
And now he stood alone in a house far away from everything he knew. He was there with no friends, no family, no acquaintances. Even he was there with nothing, nothing except a letter, a proposition for an interview sent by a young, uh, sent by an American journalist whose name vaguely rang a bell, was right there on Emil's desk. He had almost forgotten about it, having been lost in his own thoughts, but thinking about how alone he was made him remember that someone out there still wanted to know what he was up to. All right, then, the former Rams commissar thought as he took out his pen, if the only way for him to become part of history was to relate the atrocities he had been complicit in, then so be it. Yes, uh, yes, some, or yes, some things are best left unspoken. This will be a controversy that will follow the MPP for two weeks and impact coalition unity by minus 15%. Or no, if the people want to know, then they will know everything. No, the, uh, this will be a controversy that will follow the RDC for two weeks and impact coalition unity by minus 15%. Yes, the truth is, the truth is the most, the truth is the most important. Reaching out and establishing communications with our old allies across the pond could do great things to future English-American relations. I don't, think, I don't think you even get an event for England when you're joining the OFN. <laughs> Not that I remember, anyway. Maybe I'm crazy. Nothing's happening in Russia yet. Unfortunately not. Oh, never mind. Magadan and Mar are already slugging it out. Uh, that's all fine. Now. Deterioration. Oh, Robert, it's, more, uh, it's minor again. Robert Graham Minor, U.S. Ambassador to the West Indies Federation, read the report in front of him with a growing sense of alarm and trepidation. Reports of violence against members uh, the currently building party, uh, the current ru the currently ruling party, to which the Prime Minister of Jamaica belongs, are increasing daily. If current increasing trends continues, have every reason to suspect a potential outbreak of widespread political violence on the island. He threw it down and grabbed his phone. Hopefully, the Prime Minister would be able to clarify the situation. Oh, excuse me, and provide needed reassurance that that, that, that it was under control. After a brief dial tone, uh, the phone was picked up, uh, not by the PM, but by a secretary. I'm sorry, Ambassador Minor, but the Prime Minister is visiting his Minister of the Interior, who, as I'm sure you know, just got sent to the hospital. Would you like to leave a message by any chance? Robert uh, shook his head. No, thank you. I think you can wait. As he said that, he was already planning a trip to Kingston to confer personally with the Prime Minister. As Robert passed by cabinet, his eyes fell on a 38 revolver with six bullets left next to it. He abhorred violence, so it, it galled him beyond belief to have to consider it. Despite this, he took the gun and its and its holster and put the bullets in a place where he could easily access them, just as a safety precaution. He thought that's a good idea. Now, Razak wins the Malaya elections following the end of the provisional government in the immediate aftermath with the UMAJF victory in Malaya, which stands for United Malaya Anti-Japanese Forces. Local elections were scheduled to determine the leader of the new Malayan government. The nationalist uh, Pertubuhan. Uh, Keban, Keban, Kebangs, Kebang Sang, Kebang San, Malayu Barsatu has secured a decisive victory in the election driven by the popularity of pro-American leader uh, Tun Abdul Razak, now leader of a free Malaya. Razak aims to further co uh, further cooperation of Malaya with America while drawing upon Malaya, uh, Malaya, Malay nationalism to bring Malaya to recovery. However, a strong showing by the Barisan uh, Socialist Coalition has cast doubt of Razak's ability to push his agenda without causing tension inside Malaya with the popularity of the leader of the coalition, Ahmad uh, Boes Tamam. Already Washington has congratulated Razak on his victory and promised further aid to the war-torn country, as we have expected. Out go the Japanese, in comes the OFN. The first elections in Malaya since the end of the war have concluded, and it seems that, thankfully, our favourite candidate has come out on top. Abdul Razak Hussein has managed to win the hearts and minds of the people. Uh, as, and he now sits at the top of the nation, uh, ready to implement his rebuilding plans. A conservative Razak is exactly the kind of man we would want in charge, a moderate, amitable to the OFN. Uh, he seems to be dedicated to the rebuilding of the nation, something is something it doubtlessly needs given the devastation caused by the war. Razak's victory comes off as the best case scenario for us. He is, unlike his opponents, quite palatable to our interests and he will without doubt uh, cooperate with us in the near and far future as we are already in talks with him from Malaya to join the OFN as an observer. It is obvious that his victory secured the status of his country as an American ally. However, we are not entirely done with Malaya yet. With its near guaranteed entry into the OF in the OFN comes the need for economic and humanitarian aid, as we obviously cannot let Razak and the Malayan people deal with the devastation of, the, of their country themselves. While such an endeavour may be costly, it is also an opportunity for us by funneling money and resources into Malaya. We can make sure that it will stay a reliable ally for us no matter what happens. All this wasn't for naught in the end. Political power, plus 50. Federation of Malaya joins the American 
Economic Sphere and OFN Observer, which grants annual GDP growth factor plus 5%. The Federation of Malaya will be known as the Federation of Malaya. All voters will turn to support the Democrat and Republican parties over the span of one week. But I don't think you're in our faction, are you? No, you're just in the Economic Sphere. There he is, Ton Abdul Razak. Thank you for being here. <laughs> With a uh, planned economy, nice. Okay, this is an opportunity I'm going to take to upgrade our M60s. And by M60, I mean the tank, not the uh, the general purpose machine gun. Whoever thought that was a good idea to name a machine gun and a tank the exact same thing? No, I suppose you, you go to, uh, you know, oh, there's a meme about it, about it, about things being named M1 in, uh, during World War II. It's a really good meme, actually. I think it, it talks about the M3 as well. Now, pump up the armor. We've got the diesel engine, that's what we want. We've got the cast armor, that's what we want. Torsion bar, splendid. Advanced MBT cannon, three-man turret, improved radio, that's all good. Now what we need is NBC protection. Uh, we also need automatic fire protection equipment. And... Easy expanded fuel capacity, yes. That's going to be especially useful in Africa. We're currently producing the M60A1, so we'll call this the M60. Also, the uh, of course, the M60 carries on from the, the three previous patent tanks the M47, the M48, and the M49, I think. But the M60 wasn't itself officially a patent tank, but I'm going to change that. M60 pattern A2. Very nice. We'll be upgrading that in a second as well. Well, not a second, but relatively soon once we get the advanced engine and armor improvements. All right, splendid. And we'll do the same for our APC. Pull up the armor, it's going to get a good increase. Nice. Doubling, not, uh, actually, yeah. Let me just. Let me, uh, reset. So it's currently 14.6. Gonna bump that up to 21.1. Armor is at... Where's armor again? 17. Okay. Why are you using the tank, the tank model? That's weird. Armor is 17. I'm gonna go up to 12.6. Ah, you've already got expanded fuel capacity. Fantastic. I'm gonna give you the NPC protection. And, of course, the... Uh, da, 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 we're going to give you the automatic fire protection, and I think that's it. Yeah, improve radio. For some reason, the, these don't give any actual soft attack. By the way, they give us lots of breakthrough protection, so I'll. Torsion bar. Welded? No, no, no. Cast. Cast. It's gotta be cast. Only a one increase in armor, but what can you do? Gasoline? No. Diesel. Diesel. <laughs> PTRs. Nice. Alright, we got the DMBC. Expanded fuel capacity. Uh, automatic for protection. FPE. Improved radio is the best thing we have right now, right? Oh, sugar. Yeah, that's the best thing. We'll call this the M113A2. I think that's what we want. And it will put you into production. Nice. How's the training going? Should be going pretty strong. Let me just quickly check our division template again. Uh, we can get rid of this, don't need it. Uh, yeah, we got the maintenance company, got the logistics, got the artillery. 
we're relying on the artillery for our, to get our soft attack. We have a good amount of soft attack. Thanks, give us the break there. That's a good template. I like this template a lot. No. Uh, though I think, do we have another uh, CIA mission in Malaya? No? Okay, it kind of seemed to be implying that we did. Funnily enough, there was actually an event to support the, uh, the Zionists in Israel at the start of the game. Uh, I think that's to do, uh, but I don't think you can do it after the kingdom is established. Damn it, it is the United Arab Kingdom as well. So, no Jews. I thought it was the Kingdom of the Levant or something like that. I guess not. The Italo Turkish War is such, a, is like such a waste. Like, you barely get any territory. You should, you should completely eliminate the Syrian national state as Italy if you win. It's annoying. I haven't done any of the research here, though. Get the belly buster. Now, Caming the Red Ghost, classification top secret Central Intelligence Agency, Directorate of Intelligence Subject, contact with PDAF leader. After various attempts of reaching, let alone finding the man in charge of the People, People's Democratic Armed Forces, our operatives have been able to make contact with the elusive head of this public controllist rebel group, Amir uh, C.F. Rudden. Despite the PDAF's uh, evident need for our support, C.F. Uh, Rudden has been quite skeptical in, in accepting any form of proposition from us. Uh, no doubt because of his ideological background we may be able to persuade him by presenting our concrete aid to UMAGF AJF in Malaya to ease any doubts about our commitment we will report any further developments when they arise proceed I assume this is about Indonesia I'm going to assume so now uh, we'll do this about uh, we'll do this first check recording make sure as well I'll keep checking it but uh, I'm always suspicious what can I say Oh, the new I think we read that as well. Yeah, that's fine. Now, the news leaks. This morning, the press offices of the New York Times, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, San Francisco Chronicle, Boston Globe, and half a dozen and half a dozen other newspapers of repute received the same anonymous package. Inside were a group of photocopies detailing how the Nixon campaign and the FBI conspired to wiretap political opponents during the 1960 election. Needless to say, the outrage from the National Progressive Pact was immediate and uh, and fierce. George Wallace took to national television in the afternoon in an interview upon the front steps of the Alabama Capitol in which he looked at the cameras and called President Nixon a corrupt crook and concluded with demands that he resign at once. The White House and the Republican Democrat National Convention have clammed up for the time being, refusing to issue a statement to the press about the document's origins of veracity while keeping their heads low and letting a blow over may have worked in the past with minor scandals something as broad as this is simply too massive to ignore uh, the press the public and especially the national progressive pact will not tolerate Nixon's silence for much longer deny everything tricky dick sounds like someone is breaking in oh, the Indian subcon Now, oh, question of independence. It was not quite the call Ambassador Minor had expected to hear today. The implications were concerning, as Jamaican Prime Minister Norman Manley laid out the situation developing in his country. So to be clear, he said after Manley had finished everything, uh, had finished explaining, there is a push for independence. Correct, Manley answered the usual suspects. Uh, Bustamante, obviously, Minor grunted the, the Jamaican Labour Party was a consistent irritant and thorn in the side of both Manley and the West Indies Federation, and Alexander Bustamante was the driving force. A persistent, relentless, and unapologetic anti-colonial... Uh, an anti-colonist used it's colonialist uh, who used the Labour Party as a vehicle for his agenda yeah no shit everyone uses political parties as vehicles for their agenda that's the entire reason political parties exist he'd never been this aggressive before he'd not had an opportunity like this before Manley said the rewritten federation cons uh, constitution isn't exactly popular it underrepresents and exploits us so the common understanding goes and uh, uh, some concerns are valid for sure but he's trying to turn it into something it isn't something bigger Certainly, Minor agreed. There was only one thing he was interested in right now. Are you going to do it? A pause on the other end of the line. There was one reason I'm calling. I believe this referendum could be held and defeated easily. However, things are unpredictable. The people may view it as weakness if I seemingly give in to Bustamante's demands. Another pause of victory would be ideal as it would negate Bust and it would negate Bustamante's apolitical problem. Techn uh, technically, or maybe Bustamante will, will pull a Nicholas Sturgeon. Technically, I do not have to entertain this at all, though if I refuse to hold it, it will be, it will be unpopular. I, w I would need the support of the United States if I did this. Could I count on you? Should that be decided? Actually, if you believe you have the votes, I would recommend you strongly consider turning Bustamante's gamble against him. An, an independence referendum will be held. Uh, da -da -da -da. 
memorandum to William Colby, chief of police to... What the fuck was that? Oh, my bottle. Uh, subject, truncated summary of iridescent implementation and aftermath. Number one, following successful integration into uh, Philippine Department Command Structure, a ASOP established contact with informant Gemstone over the following week. Ah, good. Magdalene has knocked out a murder. Uh, da, 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 da. Over the following week. An otherwise close confidant of Mr. Fertig, Gemstone, led a faction of officers opposed to his decision to negotiate with the Red Party of the Philippines shortly after the, the Bickle Offensive Taba or Tab A, Tab A. Tab -A. Uh, ASOP then utilised her proximity to the General to engineer a deniable outcome. ASOP accomplished uh, iridescent on the night of deleted. While Mr. Ferdinand was resting in his quarters, the late General had acquired a dependency on sleeping aids during the post-war insurgency, Tab B. Sympathetic medical staff ensured the autopsy blamed his sudden departure on self-inflicted misadventure. Personnel who suspected foul play were dispatched without complications. Wait, so, so is Ferdinand dead? No, he's still alive. Uh... The late general report dependency. Huh, okay. JCS then nominated Major General Dwight E. Beach, USMC, Tab C, as commander of uh, Philippine Department, citing apprehensions over the recalcitrance and wavering loyalty of native forces. He was sworn in uh, Tacloban late on uh, late Gulf. On deleted after a brief flight from Darwin, vowing to reorganize US FIP in anticipation of both Japanese and resumption of hostilities with the Red Insurgents. Although the rank and file received General Beach less warmly than his predecessor, his new adjutants expressed confidence in his leadership. Aesop left the theatre thereafter. Number four, Agent Tortu uh, requested. Uh, how come that isn't spelled in, capital, in capitals? Requested reassignment to the Europe Division after debriefing. Recommend, uh, recommend withholding transfer and a thorough psych eval. Talent like his has better use here than in a suicide posting. From Jacob Eisenhold, analyst, APLAA. It's time for us to assume direct control. Dwight E. Beach uh, joins the US forces in the Philippines. Okay, so now Dwight E. Beach is running things. Have we just assassinated Fertig? I think we've just killed Fertig. I think we swapped out his sleeping pills for, for poison pills, and then we got his medical staff on board, and then anyone who suspected anything we killed. I think that's what we just did. Yeah, he's, here's Dwight E. Beach. American firepower. Very nice. Uh, let me quickly read that now. Do I see beach? American firepower attack plus 5% division uh, division recovery plus 5% internal speed plus 10% part of the Philippine conflict the most service in the Pacific Dwight Edward Beach could claim was Guadalcanal and New Guinea as a field artillery officer he had no history in the region otherwise no investment in any one of its long grueling wars no connections with the natives to draw from nor the magnetic uh, charisma holding uncertainties together like glue a MacArthur Wainwright or a Ferdinand he is most decidedly not nevertheless the Pentagon chose this army man uh, I guess this is what happens if the uh, if the Reds take Manila instead of you because I think Ferdinand was still in charge um, before I replayed from the start and we had taken Manila uh, well, not, uh, nevertheless the Pentagon chose this army man as the 4th commander of the United States Army of the Philippines what the 45th Division, uh, Infantry Division General did have however was more firepower than any of his predecessors ever had the increasingly desperate Joint Chiefs of Staff approved limited escalation for the decapitated US FIP bore the brunt of Japan's reprisal in other words, they handed Beach a blank check for equipment heavier and more blatantly American than the deniable assets already in theatre. M55s, ATGMs, patents, honest to goodness, Sky Raiders, he names it, he gets it. Beach may be, may be no MacArthur, that's a good thing. Come to return with his corn cob pipe, aviator shades, and the full might of the US Army, he may be no Ferdig, so trusted by his men that they would follow him to the ninth circle of hell. Then again, the actual MacArthur is an invalid in a military hospital. The actual Ferdig six feet under, yeah, we did kill him. What good would aping those failures do him now? Now, Langley. Jacob Friedman's entire life had been leading up to this point. Everything he had done, everything he had learned, everyone he had known had all led to this moment to this location. 10.27am June 15th, 1963, Langley, Virginia. He had no reason to be nervous. He was everything they were looking for. Graduated from George Mason University with honours, almost fluent in German, good with people. His list of achievements went on and on. And yet he could feel... Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, what's this? Our capacity to provide further support to the Filipino rebels has been effectively neutered due to an ongoing blockade on the islands by the IGN. We can only afford to sit through supplies for our volunteers and nothing else, lest our ships are to be blown out of the waters. So can we send volunteers? We can. Splendid. Only one. Okay. One will have to do then. Do we have any division fully trained yet? We do. We have one. One legendary division. The Buckeye Division. One and only one.
Now we can send our volunteers. Surely we'll have an airbase somewhere. Um, I did have, I did get, an, I think, two air wings ready for uh, Malaya. I think I sent them as well, didn't I? Yeah, I did send them. So they're probably somewhere, maybe around Australia. If they've redeployed to the nearest airbase, maybe they're still in Malaya. Not quite sure where they've gone. Yeah, we definitely there's there somewhere. No. Ah, oh, where was I? What's the what's the one thing we can take about? Ah, oh, yeah, it's that. That's fine. Uh, and as he could feel beads of sweat make their way down his back as he entered the building, what if they said no? What if everything he had done for most of his life was for nothing? What if his heart was shattered like glass? He ignored these questions. He ignored these questions as he pressed on past, uh, past the front desk with the pretty receptionist. His heart pounded as he approached the room he was sold to. He could barely hear his own hand rapping against the wooden door. Come in, came the response. He opened the door and sat down across from the man who had who held his heart in his hands. They made eye contact and the other man smiled and began, Son, uh, what makes you think you're a good fit for us? Jim had a, had a, had a, uh, had a habit of rambling. Of letting words spill out in desperate attempt to make his thoughts make sense. With effort, he had trained himself to stem this flow of words in careful, calculated sentences. Jacob sold himself to the man. He answered his questions and responded to his thoughts, ignoring the fear that lurked in the back of his mind. For a moment, there was silence. Then the man smiled and reached out his hand. Welcome to the CIA, son. Aha, he has just sold his soul. But all right, lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I replayed. I, I know it, it took a while. And for him... April, yeah, we progressed like two months. Not even two, yeah. Yeah, not even two months, but hey. We've replayed, and now we have the Federation of Malaya in our economic sphere. And we'll still win in 1964 by good margin. So, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.